Happy Friday, everybody. It's Dr. Bridget Young from babyformulaexpert.com on another glamorous Friday in my car. I am about to go home, but I'm gonna take a good 10 minutes to talk to you about the most common question I now get very frequently, which is how in God's name do you decide which of those fantastic, sexy, extra ingredients in formula is the best since there is no formula with all of them together. So that's what we're gonna talk about today and I'm gonna to try to give you some things to consider when making your decision. Um, again, if you don't know me, welcome. I'm Bridget Young, I'm a doctor of perinatal nutrition and a certified lactation counselor and founder of babyformulaexpert.com. I'm in my car all alone, I, I'm on my way to see my kids so I wanted to do this quickly so that I don't have to wrangle them in the video while I do it and I can just hang out with them. We're gonna go swimming, I'm so excited. So let us get started. Like I said, this is a question I get all the time, especially recently with the release of a bunch of new formulas that have a lot of really sextra extras, like MFGM and or lactoferrin, or is the HMO better, or is it better to have a partially hydrolyzed formula? Um, so it's, a, it's an impossible decision because you're literally comparing an apples and oranges. They're, these are all very different things, and you can't get them all in one formula. So my goal today is to try to give you some individual things about your unique baby that will help you make the decision. Because while I and every other medical professional will say, well, you can't compare those things, you kind of do have to compare them with your purchasing decision. So hopefully this will help. So first, um, the kind of big ones on the market I mentioned are MFGM, which is milk fat globule membrane. This is the NeuroPro Enfamil formulas, and it's also found in Enfamil's Inspire. Then you have Lactoferrin, which currently Enfamil's Inspire is the only formula that has it, but I think we'll see that changing soon. Then you have the HMOs, which stand for human milk oligosaccharide, and on your list of ingredients, you'll see that as 2-FL, which is 2-Fucosalactose. This is the sexy ingredient in Similax Pro formulas, and it's the HMO that Gerber just added to their Gerber Gentle and to Gerber Soothe. So if you're just starting off with formula, you're faced with having to choose between these if you can afford even buying one of these formulas in the first place. Now, I have an individual happy hour on each of these ingredients, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time going into the science behind and the research behind um, each of these individual ingredients. I'll give you a two-second summary. So milk fat globule membrane um, was shown to help baby's cognition, it's like a sort of version of a baby IQ test, and they did perform better than babies who got a formula without it, so they performed like breastfed babies. Um, and I think even more importantly, milk fat globule membrane provides immune protection to the baby who receives it. So they get sick a little less often, particularly they get less ear infections. That's MFGM. Lactoferrin also provides a lot of immune protection to babies, particularly in the gastrointestinal tract itself. So it is a fantastic thing to have in a formula if you can. Then you have the 2-FL-HMO, which stands for human milk oligosaccharide. This is a breast milk prebiotic. So it has a very powerful effect on the bifidobacteria in the baby's gut. It helps them explode in growth. And some research suggests that it might also help keep markers of inflammation lower in the baby's system. That's really newish um, and not 100% sure. So um, those are the three biggies. And then of course you've got other things like, should it be gentle, should it be partially hydrolyzed, should it have lactose, um, on top of these big decisions. So first, before I go into the factors you should consider, I wanna say that I don't consider any of these absolutely necessary. Um, I just don't think the research is strong enough for us, and the FDA agrees with me, otherwise they would have it as a required ingredient. I think they're wonderful. I think they're really helpful for certain babies, but it's not something that I would say, like, I really think every formula fed baby needs lactoferrin. I just, at this point in what we know about how to feed babies formula, I just don't think we're there yet. So I really want that to ease some of your discomfort. So here are the things I think that you should think about and consider with your individual baby before, you know, when you're faced with a decision of like, uh, Gerber or NeuroPro, I don't know, or whatever you're considering. One, I truly believe the macronutrients should be more important in your decision. So figure out, does your baby need a partially hydrolyzed formula? Do they need a fully hydrolyzed formula? Do they thrive better on reduced lactose? Because the, con the amount of protein 
carbohydrate and fat is obviously so much more than these little concentration extras. I always say it's awesome if your baby can have lactoferrin and milk fat globule membrane, but if that means that they are having stomach upset every day, which is causing inflammation, which is causing them not to absorb their nutrients, then no, it's way worse. <laughs> so the number one priority is of course, that your baby is comfortable and they're able to fully digest all the nutrients in their formula. That's so much more important than whether or not they have this one sexy breast milk ingredient. So nailing down the macronutrients that are best for your individual baby is the number one priority. Then if you happen to have one of these sexy ingredients available in that combination, consider it. But you may find when you get to the perfect blend, it's not even an option for you anymore. And then your decision is made. So that's the first thing. The second thing is how old is your baby? Um, and I just mean this from a literal biological standpoint. For example, once an infant is six months old, they are ready for solid foods. This means that their intestines have matured enough. If you think about um, newborn babies' intestines, I always think about them as being kind of leaky like there. This is how their cells look in the intestines. So things are just floating through. This is how hormones and um, bioactive components in breast milk help a newborn baby. But by the time they're six months old, those intestines have closed up because that baby is ready to eat food. We don't want pieces of steak just floating into the bloodstream. So there have much more, these are what their tight junctions have closed is a more official way to say that. So some of these really sexy ingredients may still have a, um, an effect in the local intestinal tract, but they're not going to be absorbed into the bloodstream. So they're, they are a tiny bit less effective, for lack of a better word, and all of the research on these sexy ingredients is really in the first three to six months of life. So if you're just starting supplementing your eight-month-old baby, it's really not as important. They still may provide some benefit, but the benefit is probably going to be a little less than if they were a newborn baby. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, very much related to that is, are you supplementing your baby? So if you are also providing your baby breast milk, your own breast milk, that is so much better than what they're getting in the formula. Like there is milk fat globule membrane, obviously, and lactose and too few cost of lactose and all these things in your breast milk. And also it's tailored to your individual baby because you guys share the same environment. So not to say that these things in formula wouldn't benefit a mixed fed baby, but your baby is getting so much of it from your breast milk if you're providing, you know, really any amount to them that I just think it becomes a little less critical. Um, and so if you're like really stressing, stressing about the decision, I don't want you to stress about it as much. So the combination of how old is your baby and how much formula relative to breast milk they're getting should really help you weigh like how big of a deal this should be in your decision. Next, think about your individual special unique baby and their little very short medical history and your family history. By that, I mean, for example, do you have an older child that had chronic ear infections? Um, I had oh, one of my kids had chronic ear infections and um, I can tell you it stinks. So maybe a formula that has something like milk globule membrane that decreases the incidence of otitis media, which is an ear infection, that would be super appealing to me because I feel like there's something in my genetics that makes my kids prone to ear infections. Um, did, do you have an ear infection that, or sorry, did you have a kiddo that had a lot of GI issues? Maybe lactoferrin would help. Here's another really um, important thing. Did you deliver via C-section and then um, exclusively formula feed? Well, in that case, we know that C-section babies have a very different microbiome than breastfed babies. Um, and so maybe for you, having a prebiotic that really helps the microbiome look a little more like a breastfed baby's, which is what we want, maybe that might be more helpful for that special baby. And so the HMO may be more important. Um, again, there's not such thing as one is better than the other. It's just what of these fit into your individual criteria. And then from there, trust your instinct. So just consider them all and hopefully one just sits better with your soul and that's the one that you should try. Next, these things are not breast milk. And by that I mean, while lactoferrin is in breast milk, a formula with lactoferrin is not breast milk. And that goes the same for all of them. And what I mean by that is, while there's a lot of research that supports all of these things being very safe and helpful for babies, um, 
None of that matters. All that matters is your unique baby. And if they have a bad reaction to it, that's not a good thing. I have definitely heard from several parents who have tried um, Enfamil's NeuroPro with the MFGM and are convinced that it causes their baby to spit up. Then that is not a great formula for you. <laughs> um, and just because it statistically in these studies showed positive benefits for some, for the majority of infants, if it's not sitting well with your baby, well, your baby is the only baby that matters in your world. So um, that's what I mean by these things are not breast milk. It's not the same, and there's always a baby out there who will have some kind of bizarre reaction to anything we put in formula. And lastly, the other thing that you need to consider, I know nobody wants to talk about this, but is cost. If you cannot afford, some of these formulas are very expensive. If you can't afford them, then you shouldn't consider them and you shouldn't feel bad about that. I feel really strongly about this. We know that finances are like marriage and families often number one sources of arguments. And if you are argue, arguing with your partner or if this is causing you a lot of anxiety and sacrifice to buy this really expensive formula, well, that anxiety is sensed by your baby. And, you know, in addition to feeding them, it's also your job to provide them with a loving, nurturing environment and a lot of love and stimulation. And if this kind of stress from your finances is keeping you from doing that, well, that's completely defeating the purpose. And that kind of love and nurturing of your baby is just as important as providing them calories. So if you can't afford a formula that has a lot of these extra things, then please don't worry about it. And please don't feel bad about it. That's just the way it is. And I tr truly believe that that's then making the perfect scenario for your individual family. So think about all of these criteria. Again, I can't give you one is better than the other. I would have a different recommendation for every single baby. So think about all these individual factors and from there, trust your instinct with the first one to try. And remember, it's not permanent. If you feel really good about one and you try it and it just does not sit well with your little one, no biggie, you can change. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Um, and there's going to be more of this stuff coming out. There's a lot of research going on with other components that aren't on the formula market yet. And you bet your bottom dollar, they will be soon. And so this conversation is going to be ever changing. And so these criteria, I'm always going to recommend thinking about these for your individual baby first. So I'll do a really quick recap of the things to really think about for your unique baby when making the decision. And then remember from there, trust your instinct about which one kind of speaks to you more. So first thing to consider is not the sexy marketing ingredients, it's the macronutrients. You really need to figure out first the best macronutrient blend, um, the protein, the carbohydrate, and the fat that keeps your baby really comfortable so that you're sure they're absorbing all of their nutrients. That's way more important than some of these sexy things. And then once you've got that blend, you can explore which of these ingredients may be available in that blend. Two consider how old your baby is, remembering that older babies' intestines have sealed up. And so these ingredients only really are going to act inside their intestines. They're not going to really be absorbed into their bloodstream um, like they would be with a newborn baby. Three, are you supplementing or how much breast milk are you giving your baby? Because remember, of course, the more breast milk you're giving, the less these ingredients are really relevant because they're getting them more in an individually tailored form from your breast milk. Four, what is your individual family history and your little baby's yeah, like a tiny medical history? Were they born via C-section? Had they ever had a probiotic before? Do you have other children or do you or your baby's other biological parent have um, a really particular family history that one of these things might help, like ear infection, um, like just really sick during infancy, GI issues, that kind of a thing? Because um, one of these special ingredients may speak to you more than another if that's the case. Lastly, remember that these ingredients don't make this breast milk. Um, so while you may think that this is going to be awesome, if you give it to your baby and they don't tolerate it well, ain't no thing. Just move on to something else. It's totally fine. And lastly, don't forget that you can't just ignore the cost. We all wish, we all want to give our babies the best and more expensive is not necessarily best and if a formula is out of your fi fi family's financial reach then it is and that's no problem and you don't want to take on financial stress that your baby will then feel so those are my tips i really hope that's helpful i know everybody wants me to just say i really like this one i don't like this one but i just can't 
that what makes babies so fabulous is that they're tiny people. They're all different. And so they all have different biologies that are on top of different genetic and family histories, etc. So those are the things that should go into you and your pediatrician's decision about which formula is best. And of course, the decision if something goes wrong about which formula to try next. I really hope that is helpful and just get your wheels turning a bit. I am like super excited to hang up and go see my kids because I'm taking them swimming and I can't wait. I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. The weather has been amazing here and I cannot wait to go have a good time. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much. I'll talk to everybody later. Bye.